Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionados, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, baby, so let's get started. For two days only, you can get a 50% discount towards my cardiac pharmacology course. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 at medicosisperfectionators.com. Only five left. If you want to try a sample first, go to medicosisperfectionators.com. Vitamins are essential. You have to eat them in the diet. They aid in metabolism. They are cofactors for enzymes. And vitamin B5 is no exception. It will give you coenzyme A and coenzyme ASH, the famous co ash vitamin b5 it's a water soluble vitamin therefore toxicity is very unlikely why because any excessive amount will be excreted by your kidney deficiency is more likely theoretically but actually with pantothenic acid deficiency is extremely rare so deficiency is rare toxicity is rare that's amazing B complex, B1 is thiamine, B2 is riboflavin, and B3 is niacin, and we have talked about them in previous videos in my playlist called Biochemistry. Honestly, I wanted to make a video about vitamin B4, but vitamin B4 does not exist. So, after serious thought and contemplation, I've made the hard decision, which is to talk about vitamin B5 today. Pantothenic acid. Let me tell you about something that drives me nuts. I went to the store to get some vitamins. Okay, and look at this. Where is pantothenic acid? Pantothenic acid is right here. Where is vitamin B1? Vitamin B1 is thiamine and it's right here. But this is really, really ugly. I, I'll tell you why. Because thiamine is B1. So instead of writing thiamine and pantothenic acid, why don't you bunch of doofuses do it like this vitamin a first is number one who starts with total carbohydrate on a bottle of vitamin who goes to the store oh i'm actually worried about my carbohydrate intake let me go get some vitamins oh shut up started alphabetically baby so vitamin a is number one and then you go with vitamin b1 which is thiamine vitamin b2 which is riboflavin b3 which is niacin b4 doesn't exist b5 which is pantothenic acid and then b6 which is pyridoxin b7 is freaking biotin b9 is folate but to be honest you should write it as folic acid because folate is natural folic acid is artificial note that i care but it's just a tiny bit and a b c vitamin c and then you go with d which is active form so it's going to be d3 mr kelsey triol like this look at the beauty and you become organized like a normal human being not like this garbage i really don't know who is to blame is this like a government regulation that regulates you have to do it like this or is it the fact that the pharmacist who actually make the freaking drug is different than the marketing team who designed this freaking thing someone needs to get their act together man I'm a little OCD, so please forgive me. Okay, when you go to the store and you get some bread. Okay, let's do it. Niacin, that's B3. Thiamine, that's B1. Riboflavin, that's B2. Folic acid, that's B9. Where is pantothenic acid? Oh, it's not there. Hey, Walmart, I need my money back. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Before some safety crusaders raid the store, let me explain. Pantothenic, the word literally means from everywhere you can find vitamin B5 literally in every food. So even if Walmart did not fortify the bread with pantothenic acid, you will be okay. So chill your butt down. Panto means all. That's why the word pantomime means all communication. You're supposed to communicate everything without using words. Thenic means strength. That's why the word hypo. Asthenia. What does hyposthenia mean? Hypo means low. Asthenia means strength. So, low strength. It's like thrombasthenia of platelets. Thrombo, platelets. Asthenia is weakness because A means no. Asthenia is strength. So, pantothenic, all strength, which means from everywhere. So, if the exam question says, please mention all of the food sources of vitamin B5. If you write any food that you know, like anything, you will be correct meat fish fruits vegetable seeds etc from everywhere baby why the flip do we need vitamin b5 to get coenzyme a co a and coenzyme a s h this is coenzyme a this is a thiol group because thiol means sulfur Artificial sources, as you know, enriched food or vitamin B complex supplements like the stupid bottle that I got from the store. A vitamin B5 deficiency is extremely rare. Vitamin B5 toxicity is also extremely rare. Thank God. 
Medicosis biotips. B1 is thymine, decarboxylation, baby. B2 is riboflavin, redox reactions, baby. B3, reduction oxidation again. B5 will give you coenzyme A. What is the function of coenzyme A? Lots of functions. Pyruvate into acetyl-CoA needs CoA. Where is pyruvate coming from? It came from glucose. Hashtag glycolysis. Remember, in glycolysis, glucose becomes pyruvate. And then pyruvate wants to enter the TCA cycle. But for it to enter the TCA cycle, it has to become acetyl-CoA first. And you need CoA to be added to pyruvate so that it can give you acetyl-CoA. Also, if you want to destroy and break down fat, in other words, to convert the fatty acid to small molecules of acetyl-CoA, you need CoA. And if you want to build up fat, fatty acid synthesis or fatty acid elongation of long chains or like short chains into long chains, you also need CoA. So whether you're talking about fatty acid synthesis or fatty acid oxidation, either one requires CoA. You can thank B5. We love acetyl-CoA because it can enter into the TCA cycle in the mitochondria and give us energy. Vitamin B5 absorption is pretty straightforward. You literally eat anything and it has vitamin B5. Also, your lovely bacterial microbiome will add some vitamin B5 to you. Absorbed, boom, you have it. So, pantothenic acid, where did it come from? It came from beta alanine and pantoic acid, leading to pantothenic acid, which is an amide. Remember the famous three enzymes that required five cofactors? One of the five cofactors were coash, which came from vitamin B5 or pantothenic. Remember the mnemonic, Teflon company, T is thiamine, F is riboflavin, FAD, L is lipoic acid, N is NAD from niacin or B3, CO is coash from B5, pantothenic baby. What are these enzymes that need five cofactors? Pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. Let's start with pyruvate dehydrogenase. You eat carbohydrate, glucose, glycolysis becomes pyruvate. By pyruvate dehydrogenase becomes acetyl-CoA. We love acetyl-CoA because it can become TCA cycle energy. There is another reason why we love acetyl-CoA. It can become fat. Hashtag fatty acid synthesis. Cool. Pyruvate dehydrogenase requires the five cofactors. You can thank B5. Here is just another simplistic version. Carbohydrate, glucose, pyruvate, pyruvate, dehydrogenase, acetyl-CoA into the TCA cycle equals ATP. Whether you eat carbohydrate, proteins, or lipids, they will end up as acetyl-CoA. Whether you eat the bun, the cheese, or the meat in the burger, you will end up as acetyl-CoA into the TCA cycle energy. So we are done with the first enzyme, which was pyruvate dehydrogenase. Let's talk about the second enzyme, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. It's here, baby, and it requires five cofactors. Coash, you can thank B5. What is the TCA cycle? Acyl-CoA enters. Citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA. Succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, back to acetyl-CoA. We are done with the first enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase. The second enzyme was alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. The third enzyme is branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, part of the proteins. So you eat proteins, they become amino acid. Let's say that the amino acid is loosened. It requires branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase to become acetyl CoA, TCA cycle, money. Leucine is an amino acid. You can call this enzyme branch chain amino acid dehydrogenase or branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, become whatever, and then acetyl CoA. Thank you so much. However, bad news it can become acetoacetic acid, which is a ketone body, can lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis. In high anion gap metabolic acidosis, your pH is low, your bicarbonate is also low, but the lung is trying to compensate. Hey, we have acidosis here. Let's get rid of the acid that I can get rid of, which is. CO2. So PCO2 will also be low as a compensation. How about the anion gap? It's called high anion gap metabolic acidosis, so the anion gap will be low. Why do we love acetyl-CoA? Because it starts the TCA cycle. Remember, acetyl-CoA enters citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, back to acetyl-CoA. Yep, it's doozy. It also forms acetyl-choline. So you get the acetyl-CoA from here, acetyl-CoA, plus choline, and we'll give you the great acetylcholine, which is needed at the neuromuscular junction. Here is the nerve ending. Here is your lovely muscle. The nerve is talking to the muscle. How does the nerve talk to the muscle? By secreting acetylcholine. 
thanks to calcium who ruptured the vesicles acylcholine here into the cleft and it's binding to acylcholine receptor and this is how your muscle contracts who is the enzyme that's responsible for combining acyl-CoA with choline to form acyl-CoA it's called choline acetyltransferase choline acetyltransferase love it and then the acylcholine is binding to the receptor thank you we contract the muscle okay would you leave your muscle contraction? No, this is called rigor mortis. You're dead. You gotta, gotta relax the muscle, man. How do you relax this muscle? Beat the living crap of the acetylcholine. Break it down, baby. How do you break down the acetylcholine? It's called acetylcholine esterase. And then it will give you choline and acetic acid or acetate. All right, cool. If you have a patient who suffers from myasthenia gravis, so myasthenia gravis, the acylcholine is not functioning because of the receptor is toast because of the O2 antibodies, we would like to prolong the action of acylcholine. So prevent its degradation by giving a group of medication known as the acylcholine trace inhibitors, such as neostigmine, pyridostigmine, etc. What else? Acyl-CoA acetylation reaction. Yeah, if you need to acetyl something, you can call acetyl-CoA. Cholesterol synthesis, your testes need it, and your ovaries, and your adrenals. Ketone body formation, ZA, yeah, baby. When you don't have glucose or carbohydrate, the next step is to make ketone bodies. Your brain loves ketone bodies. But to be honest, your brain loves glucose more. Elongation of fatty acid. This is called fatty acid synthesis. We're trying to build up fat, not to break down the fat. How do you build up fat? You need acetyl-CoA and another friend called malonyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is needed to be converted into malonyl-CoA. Then the malonyl-CoA together with the acetyl-CoA will combine to each other to elongate the fatty acid. Whenever you see coash, you can thank vitamin B5, CoA, coenzyme A, also known as coacetylase, SH is the thiol group, B6 is also needed. Let's talk about fatty acid synthesis because we need coenzyme A, so we need a vitamin B5, which is pantothenic. Diet, you either eat carbohydrate, protein, or fat. Fat contains triglycerides. When you break them down, you have glycerol and free fatty acid. If you have enough energy, let's store some energy for a rainy day. Let's store the fatty acid. How would you store the fatty acid? would like to elongate them, make them big, make them big molecules, and then store them into adipose or into the liver, or whatever you want to store them at. So first you need to elongate them, and this process is called fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis, let's do it. We need three steps, citrate shuttle, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, and fatty acid synthase. Let's start with the citrate shuttle. You know that TCA cycle, yeah, acetylcholine in citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutar, we get it, so it has citrate. Cool. Citrate will take a shuttle from within the mitochondria to the cytosol, outside of the mitochondria. This is called the citrate shuttle. Number one is done. Thank you so much. Now citrate is free from the tyranny of the mighty mitochondria. Then we will break the citrate down. Hashtag citrate lyase. Lysis, baby. Now we have acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA will need to support a friend called malonyl-CoA. So this is step number two. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Let's carboxylate the acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA. And step number two is done. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Then the malonyl-CoA will return the favor to his friend acetyl-CoA. They will combine together. They can need some help from vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid. And this enzyme is called the fatty acid synthase complex. It needs pantothenic baby. And now you have the palmitoyl CoA, which is a fatty acid, but it's long. It has lots of carbons. Mission accomplished. Fatty acid synthesis is in the books. Whenever you see coenzyme A, look at this citrate, and it was acyl CoA here. And then we have acyl CoA, melanin CoA. Whenever you see CoA, you can thank pantothenic acid. I am Hillary Clinton. I mean, I am insulin and I approve this message. Why would insulin approve the fatty acid synthesis? I'll tell you why. What's the purpose of insulin? Is it to build up stuff or to destroy stuff? It's to build up stuff. What do you mean? I mean, it's to build up proteins. It's to build up fat. What do you mean by build up fat? I mean, store the fat, elongate the fat, synthesize the fat. You mean like the opposite of break down the fat? Exactly. So insulin loves for you to build up fat. It loves fatty acid synthesis. That's why insulin will stimulate 
the fatty acid synthesis process. How about glucagon? No, glucagon is the opposite. Glucagon will inhibit the fatty acid synthesis. Let me tell you something else. Why does insulin lower the glucose level in your blood? Because insulin will suggest that the glucose enters into the cell because we need to build up stuff in the cell, not to destroy it and become... No, 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 the opposite, baby. We'll need to get it into the cell so that we can build up carbohydrate. That's why. Medicine makes so much sense once we understand what the flip you're talking about. Same thing, insulin will tell the cell, hey, you took some glucose. Do you need some fatty acids with them? Oh yeah, let me elongate them and then store them. Thank you, insulin. This happens in the feeding state. When you are full, you have tons of energy. Let's save and store some energy for a rainy day. Hashtag feeding state. But how about the fasting state? I'm stranded in the desert. I'm hungry. I'm starving. Oh, let's break down some fat which we have stored before for a rainy day and let's oxidize the fat to give you some energy. Cool, man. I'm in. How do you do it? It's called beta oxidation. So beta oxidation is like breaking down the fat into acyl-CoA. Hashtag energy. Indeed, beta oxidation is breaking down the fat. So let's talk about fatty acid oxidation. You eat fat. It has triglyceride. By hormone-sensitive lipase, it becomes glycerol and fatty acid. Glycerol has a pathway. We don't care about it right now. Fatty acid has another pathway. Beta oxidation. There is also alpha oxidation and omega oxidation. I know, nerd. Shut up. We're focusing on beta oxidation now. Acetyl-CoA is here, enters into TCA cycle, give us energy, but I have bad news. It can also become ketone bodies, raising the anion gap and causing metabolic acidosis. Fatty acid oxidation. Now we are not trying to build up fat, we're trying to destroy the fat, break down the fat, oxidation baby. Three steps again. Activation, carnitine shuttle, not to be confused with the citrate shuttle of the fatty acid synthesis, and beta oxidation of even C chains, whatever. So here is the deal. You eat fat, triglycerides, glycerol and fatty acid. Fatty acid will float in the blood, but it's bound to albumin. How would you get that fatty acid to become energy? Here is the deal. We need three steps. First, activation. Let's do it. Fatty acid CoA synthase. Fatty acid CoA. So fatty acid CoA, that's brilliant. That's what we mean by activation. Step one is in the books. Two, carnitine shuttle. Let's shuttle the fatty acyl CoA from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria, which is the opposite of fatty acid oxidation. Does anyone remember? We shuttled the citrate from within the mitochondria to without. Oh, cool. Fatty acyl-CoA is now in the mitochondria. And step two is now in the mitochondria. Step three, beta oxidation, acetyl-CoA. Ooh, that's the purpose of beta oxidation, which will give you energy and sometimes some ketones. I am not insulin, glucagon, and I approve this message. Hashtag fasting state. Because when you're fasting, you're trying to destroy and break down the fat into energy because you're starving in the Sahara Desert. Let's summarize. Vitamin B5 will give you CoA. CoA is necessary for acetyl-CoA, and we have talked about the functions of acetyl-CoA. Also, succinyl-CoA, remember, this is part of the TCA cycle. It can also help you make heme, and you, may, you need heme for hemoglobin in the red blood cells. Also, to break down ketones, hashtag ketolysis, which is not to be confused with ketogenesis. This is for acetyl-CoA. So, whether you're trying to make ketones or break down ketones, CoA can help. Thank you so much, Pan antithenic acid. Also lipid metabolism, whether it's fatty acid synthesis or fatty acid oxidation. Vitamin B5 deficiency, pantothenic acid, baby. Deficiency is extremely rare. A deficiency syndrome hasn't been proven in humans. Symptoms in experimental animals, fatigue, retarded growth, graying hair, dermatitis, which makes sense because this is another vitamin B. Remember vitamin B3, which was niacin, diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia. Yep, as well as fatty liver. So does that mean that these symptoms are going to be seen in humans? Not necessarily. Maybe, maybe not. For instance, when they inject rats or mice with a huge amount of vitamin C, some of them develop bladder cancer. Of course, this is not true in human beings. Otherwise, all of the Instagram influencers will lose their jobs. Hashtag vitamin C, hashtag immunity, ha shut up. 
Roger Williams, born in India, became the top chemist in University of Texas at Austin and then became the president of the American Chemical Society. Who are these people and what do they do for a living? He discovered vitamin B5, pantothenic, vitamin B6, pyridoxin, lipoic acid, one of the five cofactors for pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase. Also avidin, which avidly binds biotin and prevents the absorption causing a vitamin B7 deficiency. Also he isolated and named folic acid. Thank you so much, sir. Look at this. This is classic male pattern alopecia. Vitamin B5 in a nutshell. So here is pantothenic acid. Literally means from everywhere. It's found in every food. And then coenzyme A. If you like to make pyruvate and acetyl-CoA and then energy, I will help you. Fatty acid degradation, hashtag beta oxidation, I'll freaking help you. Fatty acid synthesis and elongation, I'll help you. Succinyl-CoA into the TCA cycle, I'll also help you. Thank you so much, pantothenic acid. Question of the day, what's the difference between pantothenic acid and pantothenate? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Please be one of the lucky five who will get my cardiac pharmacology course before the end of the month. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. Support me here or here. You can get my cardiac pharmacology course, my antibiotics course, and my electrolytes course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense. In the next video, we'll talk about vitamin B6, pyridoxin, man.